Hi friends, I'm in my classroom at EDS and I'm gonna turn the camera so you can see my instrument. So we can review what we've done. Week one, we talked about the strings. The, st the numbers are one, two, three, four. They start from the bottom. One, two, three, four. So if I said string number one, I would mean this one. And then the letters, the letter names, we start from the top with good cats eat apples. G, C, E, A. So if I say you want to play the A string, it would be this one. If we would want to play the G, it would be this one. Also talking about the frets, the frets are the actual, these little fret bars are the metal pieces, and then the fret is the space between. So the first fret is right here. If I said, put your finger on the A string on the first fret, it would be anywhere within this space. And we talked about our finger numbers. We're gonna go ahead and just use guitar numbers I'm a pianist, so I always count this as one, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna say this is one, two, three, four. Also index, middle, ring, and pinky. So if I said put your index finger on the A string on the third fret, one, two, three. That's finger number one on the third fret on the A string. Make sense? We talked also about our strumming. In the first lesson, all we did was down strum. Also called a down stroke. And we did four all together. Let's do that now. No chords with our left hand, just down strumming with our right hand. One, two, together four times. One, two, three, four. Lovely. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then we did row, row, row your rope. So let's do that. Um, after we learned our C chord, so let's do that. The C chord is using your third finger, ring finger, on the A string on the third fret. Looks like this. You press this down. I'm using, my thumb as leverage so I can really press it down. I don't wanna just touch it. I want to press it down so that it's touching the soundboard, the wooden part. So it's pressed down, without it, with it, just changes that one note from this to this. C chords, let's do four C chords. One, two, four times, play. One, two, three, four. And then we did row, row, row your rope. So let's play that together. We put our third finger on the A string, third fret for our C chord, pressing down on the back. Singing row, row, row. One, two, sing and play. Row. That was week one. Week two, we started with, this week, uh, adding a G7. Now, this is the way I get there. We start with our C chord. We move this third finger from the third fret to the second. You don't even have to lift it off the instrument. You just slide it right up. Then you're gonna add the second finger to the C string on the same fret. So I'm doing here and here, bum, bum. And then this finger, your index finger, finger number one, is gonna go right in the middle of those two strings on the first fret. Again, you wanna make sure that it's not touching. I'm trying to do two cameras. I'm trying to get fancy, y'all. Make sure it's not touching anything but right there on those strings. If you're smashing down everything, then you're gonna get you're gonna be pushing down more than you mean to. That's our G7. So if you can play it like this, let's do four of those. One, two, ready, 
play. One, two, three, four. Now, another way that I showed you to adapt this chord, I told you to just play this note. Well, I've since spoken to someone else who teaches a, a class for a 50 plus um, it's a ukulele class, and her suggestion was keep this finger, remember that? We were on the C and we just slide there, and then this finger, and that's all. That way you can actually smash this all the way down, because it doesn't matter if you're touching this string, because this one is also going to touch it. And that's sort of a version of the G7. It's a little bit easier than this triangle shape. So again, our adapted G7... We had said it was gonna be this. You can still do that. But I'd like for you to try this. Going from the C, move here and here. That sounds a little bit more like the G7, so it'll sound closer to it when you're playing it. And we did a song with those two chords, which was Skip to My Loop. So let's try that. One, two, sing and play. Choose your partner, skip to my loo. Choose your partner, skip to my loo. Choose your partner, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Now, of course, stop it, rewind it, slow it down, anything you want to make that a little bit easier to practice with. We also learned an F chord, which was you take your peace sign, Put your finger number one on string number two, which is good cats eat your E string on the first fret. And then finger number two, your middle finger all the way up on the second fret on the G string. That's an F. Let's do four of those. One, two, ready, play. And then we also learned that if you take this finger away, A minor. All I'm doing, and see, I got to be careful not to touch any of the other strings. I'm reaching around. That's an A minor. Now, we did Don't Worry, Be Happy with our C and our A minor and our F. Now, we are going to learn next week that D minor. But that's gonna be all that we're gonna learn as far as new chords for a while because the C and the F and the G7 will get us through a whole lot of songs in that book. So we're gonna be playing a lot of songs next week just using the C, the F, and the G7, which could also just be this version of the G7. But I would also like for you to learn this D minor because I'm gonna to try to add a couple chords at a time through the course so that you have a few extras. The D minor, you start with that F shape. Remember the F, this, and this. And now it is a little hard to get it under there, so it'll take a minute to teach your fingers. But your third finger, your ring finger, goes on the string right below your middle finger in the same fret. So it's this, and then these two. This, this one, and this one. It's kind of easier to start with this one and add the top one, but I always kind of go from the F and just add it. So however it's easy for you, that's the D minor. So, and don't worry, be happy with the D minor instead of the A minor, it sounds like this. Now you can also play the A minor, just go ahead and play it while I'm playing the D minor, it's totally fine. So don't worry, be happy as it is written in the book. I'm gonna be using the D minor. You can either try the D minor, which we haven't learned yet, we're gonna learn next week, or you can do it with the A minor like we did last week. One, two, ready, and... Here's a little song I wrote. Might wanna sing it note by note. again in every life we have some 
stop right here on the C. Okay, so that is giving you the note that we'll be learning next week. And i turn this one off. And it's also just giving you a review of the things that we've learned, how we move from one chord to the other. There's some things that you really need to keep in mind. Moving between the chords is definitely the hardest part. It should not come right on the beat yet. It should not be easy yet. Um, Give yourself some grace, let it take some time. Take your time moving from one chord to the other and then jump in there. If we're singing together in the group, when you're on your own, take as long as you want, doesn't matter. When we're singing together in the group, if you don't get there in time, skip it. Just jump onto the one that you know is absolutely fine. The point of the ensemble is to keep it going, not to stress you out about getting every note perfect. Just to give you a guide and um, the training wheels to keep going, 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 even if you mess up along the way. So please don't worry about getting every note perfect. Um, when you're on your own and you're practicing it, take as long as it takes to move from one hand to another. And remember, it may not even happen in the first couple weeks. Your fingers may not wanna go that way. Um, not because of any issues you have with your hands, just in general, uh, just because all of us at this age with our brain issues, <laughs> um, it's hard sometimes to remember where they go. And take your time. If you practice just a little bit every day, that's gonna help build up that muscle memory. And the more muscle memory you have, the less you're having to work. So try to pick it up every day, even if you think I'm never gonna do it. Just pick it up and try to go there. If you can't play that G7, that's okay. Still try to put your hands in the right shape and then try your adaptive because we do want to eventually get to the uh, regular way to play it if we can. Um, let's see, what was the other thing I want to tell you? Yeah, the whole point of this is to have fun and relax. And honestly, we could just do six weeks of songs with just a C chord and we would probably have a lot of fun, but I want to give you something else to work on. You don't have to do it all. This is totally up to you. That's the best thing about taking lessons as an adult. Your parents aren't making you do it. <laughs> so you go and you choose what you wanna take from it, what you don't. So make sure that you're taking from this what you want and what you need. And be sure to tell me what you need and how I can help you better. All right, friends, I'll see ya on Wednesday.